guys and welcome to my youtube channel my name is serenity if you are new here i do k-pop and j-pop reactions and for this video you guys have all been asking um i'm going to be doing who is twice a dive into the living legends um it is 47 minutes long so that being said we're gonna get started um kind of excited because like i don't really know that much about them like i don't even know all their names so like i feel like this is gonna be nice twice is a nine member girl group and they were formed by the k-pop company jyp now, JYP is a powerhouse company in K-pop, being one of the first formed in 1997 and contributing to the formation of K-pop as a whole. It's home to many famous groups, but their girl groups have always been extraordinarily successful, such as Wonder Girls, Miss A, Itzy, Nizzy U, and now their latest girl group, N-Mix. Standing tall above these, however, is their strongest pillar. JYP Entertainment was struggling in 2015, being at an all-time low monetarily and attention-wise after the disbandment of their then most successful groups, leaving a huge hole to fill. They decided to form a survival show, 16 with JYP. a bit like American Idol or X Factor, to find their next big group, whereby 16 girls were voted off over time until 7 were left. Some of the challenges included photo shoots, dancing, singing, personality-related challenges and public engagement. It was a harsh survival show and caused upset many a time throughout the series with insulting comments and surprise eliminations. Now I previously mentioned that seven girls were left when twice is currently a girl group of nine. This is because two girls who got eliminated during the show were brought back for the final, which we will discuss soon when talking about the members. Before we get to them though, I want to quickly touch on some information that you might find interesting. Twice are the highest selling K-pop girl group ever, selling 50 million album copies between Japan and Korea alone, as well as being the fastest K-pop group to surpass 1, 2, 3 and 4 billion streams on Spotify. They were also the first K-pop group to have a J-line or Japanese line, meaning having two or more Japanese members, twice having three which actually revived the Hallyu wave or popularity of Korean culture in Japan, as well as relieving political and public tension, showcasing Twice's importance as a top group in K-pop and Korea's history. Now, let me introduce you to all nine members. I did not know that. Like, I knew they were big, and I knew that they saved JY JYP, and I knew that they came from 16, and that it was super harsh. Part of the reason why I refused to watch it. Um, but I didn't realize that they were like the top selling all time group, girl group. That's good for them. Nyon is the oldest in Twice. She sums up the group as a whole with her youthfulness, vocals, and public appeal. She starts and ends most of Twice's songs, sings a lot of the high notes. <laughs> sings a lot of their choruses and also writes numerous songs for the group. She's the wow. face of the group and the one the public usually think of first upon hearing Twice's name. Nyan is known for her virality. Everything she uses or does goes viral in an instant. Nyan has the biggest tendency out of all the members to spoil every single project or album the group have upcoming <laughs> and she loves it. She would tease her fans months before an announcement even comes out. Also, at the time of this video, She's the only member to have her solo debut with pop and self-titled album in Nayeon. Jong Yeon is a motherly figure in Twice. She has intimate relationships with all of the members, caring for them, cleaning up for them, cooking for them, and is definitely one of the factors in keeping the girls as close as they are to each other. Do not be fooled though, because once a challenge heads her way, she will not be afraid to knock anyone down in her sight. Her vocal ability is one of the best in Twice and is up there in K-pop, being incredibly rich, stable and distinct. She has a huge heart, volunteering a lot of her time to various dog and animal shelters to help out in times of need. 
During Twice's early days, she was most identifiable by her tomboy look, which was chosen for her by the company. Although in recent times, she gained control of her image and individuality and started to reverse it in a way that she wanted to. And she looks amazing either way. Unfortunately, Jonghyun also went on hiatus or break in October of 2020 to focus on her mental health and neck injury that lasted three months. Then not long after, entered her second hiatus, which lasted most of the last half of 2021. Jonghyun cared for her fans and twice so much so that during both hiatuses, she still gathered up the courage to participate in numerous music videos, although not performing. She was the second member to do this and is now happily and healthily back participating with the girls. Momo is a member who was not originally in Twice's lineup and was added at the end. She was brought back as the staff unanimously decided she was the most hardworking and committed to the show and did not deserve to be voted off prior. She is one of the three Japanese members in Twice. Although I don't think Japanese is a strong suit anymore. <laughs> Though something not to laugh at is her dancing skills. She's the main dancer of Twice, and when I say main, I mean main. She can do multiple types of dance after training since she was just three years old. She's highly respected among all dance instructors and idols for her talent and is always battling for the top spots whenever a dance discussion is brought about. Her stage presence is incredible and she always gives the most when she's performing. And be careful when she performs hello because you will pass out. <laughs> Momo's traits don't stop here though. In every situation, she is always hilariously 10 steps behind. Sana is the second Japanese member in Twice along with Momo. Now Sana is a girl of duality. She can go from cute to sexy in a matter of seconds and it is not good for my heart. She is also the most affectionate member. Agreed, it's not good for my heart either. Making sure to stress everyone else out when she gets close. Sana also sings a lot of the choruses in Twice's songs, most likely due to her captivating voice. <laughs> potential to make most lines she sings into viral moments. Sana is probably the biggest extrovert in Twice and will not hesitate to make friends with anyone she sees. She probably has the most idle friends outside of Twice and she is constantly full of energy. When her and Gio pair up together, whoever is in the vicinity better start running because they will bombard with pure energy. <laughs> Gio is the voice of Twice. Her vocal ability is outstanding and is without a doubt the best in Twice. said the best in twice do you guys agree with that out of curiosity there is never a moment of flow when she's singing live and that truly demands a lot of respect her dancing is nothing to ignore either being up there as one of the best dancers in twice if momo gives her all then Gio gives just as much and when them two are on stage together alone, the power is unmatched. She has also composed two tracks for Twice and has numerous solo OSTs for popular K-dramas. Gio was also unanimously voted as the leader by all the girls of Twice. She knows them inside and out and knows how to deal with every type of situation a member or the- It's nice to know who the leader is. I was like kind of curious who. So they all voted for I remember in, uh, oh, my brain. The Measy Project season two, I remember that every single member voted, voted for the same person. Um, and someone in the comments, because JYP was like, oh, I think this is the first time for this to happen. Someone in the comments was like, no, this actually happened in twice. So that's, that's really cool that that also happened for them. I think that speaks a lot on its own. The group faces. She is the glue. This is most likely due to her long, long training period of 10 years prior to becoming an idol, which perfectly set her up to become the leader of a worldwide sensation today. 
She is without a doubt the most competitive member of the group and when her, Nayeon and Jonghyun go up against each other in any type of challenge, a war has started. Mina is the third Japanese member along with Sana and Momo. Although opposing to them, she is definitely the most introverted idol in TWICE and most definitely within K-pop. She finds comfort in gaming, being alone on camera, but also has an immense love for her members and never fails to do any daytime activities or hobbies with them. Don't be fooled though because she is not camera shy at all. Mina also embodies elegance in her singing, talking and dancing. And the dancing side so is most angelic. definitely due to the fact she trained as a ballerina for 11 years before joining TWICE and I would kill to see more of it implemented into TWICE's dances or a solo project. Another thing not to be fooled about is Mina's duality because just like Sana, she could switch up at any moment, especially when she enters American soil. Now unfortunately, Mina was the first member of TWICE to go on a hiatus starting at the end of 2019 and lasting a year due to severe anxiety having to miss out on their Twice Lights world tour. This news was- That's so sad. That breaks my heart. I truly hate the fact that so many K-pop idols like have to go on hiatus. And nine out of 10 times, it's literally due to anxiety. Or they say that some of the girls leave the groups. Um, well, I shouldn't say just girls. I'm sure um, there's guys out there. I just don't know about it. Um, also due to anxiety like it just gets too much and i just i feel for them like i really do i i hate that they're under the amount of pressure that they are especially because they're like so pretty and they're so talented i don't know i hate it it was massive as hiatuses and mental health in k-pop has always been overlooked but coming from a group as big as twice completely changed the game and other companies later followed suit when similar occurred with their artists it marks a new movement in the K-pop world. Mina also gathered the courage to appear in Twice's comeback at the time, but did not perform either. She is also back and better than ever with the girls. Dayeon is the funniest idol in existence. No one could put a show on more than her. Can they dance like this? Sing like this? Move like this? I didn't think so. Although, whilst being incredibly goofy, Diane can switch to serious in a matter of seconds, which is a top quality. Aww. She has also written the most amount of songs out of all the TWICE members. Dahyun plays the piano oh, exceptionally so cool. well, and one of her favourite pastimes is to upload covers for Once's, TWICE's fans. Either to their YouTube channel or a private chat service. Dion also is noticeably the rapper of TWICE but has a beautiful voice and can exchange roles as well as she can her demeanour. Similar to Nayon, Dion loves to inform us about upcoming comebacks but in the most unconventional way. I'm gonna try to pay attention now that I'm like learning who some of the members are to try to distinguish like what parts they typically sing. Um, by the way though, she is so freaking gorgeous. Possible. If she changes her hair colour, you know a song is coming. <laughs> Chaeyoung is without a doubt the ace in TWICE. She raps, sings and dances each incredibly well. In TWICE's early days, she was focused mostly on rapping. <laughs> With hardly any time to showcase her vocal talent, as well as being shy about it. But in recent years, JYP has let us show this off after finding success in the first time she sung a title track whilst covering for Mina during her hiatus. But I'm forever by you. Wow. Ooh, 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 by you. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Since then, she has not looked back and continues to sing in most of Twice's songs now. Chang is also the free bird of Twice and has a very cool and calm personality. She writes poetry, she paints, she does pottery, she composes, she sometimes dresses the members, and she's the only member to have tattoos, and numerous of them. 
This cool and calm personality rubs off on the members a lot, who rely on her when wanting to chill out. So, like, I've always been curious about tattoos and K-pop groups because, like, some groups have them and then, like, some groups don't have any or maybe if they do, they're, like, where they can be hidden or they're super small. So the fact that, like, she has a bunch of tattoos and she's under JYP and in Twice, like, that's that's really actually cool. Oh, I'll take a break. She's a breath of fresh air. Chewie is the youngest member in Twice. She is also Taiwanese and speaks Chinese as her first language, completing the four of the four foreign members. All of Twice are insanely beautiful, but Chewie is the visual. She captivates anyone who walks in her aura. She was the second member who was not in the original lineup and added at the end like Momo. Chewie was added due to popular demand of the audience and due to JYP himself saying that she improved the most throughout the show, which has reigned true still to this day as she continues to reach new heights artistically every day. She sings this song? If you look back at 16 to now, you can see an immense jump in maturity, talent and individualism, something that truly makes her shine now. She also captivates during her dancing with a charming stage presence and great fluidity after training in dance from a young age as well. She is also known as the angel in Korea, and not just for her selfless personality and respect towards every living being, but due to her charity work like John Yon. Chewy also volunteers at numerous dog shelters and donated over 40,000 US dollars equivalent worth of aid and respirators to Korea and China during COVID. Chewy also never fails to make twice laugh whether it be on purpose or accident. She also speaks four languages, two fluently, Chinese and Korean. Uh, and too well enough to hold a conversation, English and Japanese. To challenge ourselves and break more barriers on world. We want to express our gratitude towards every, everyone who stands by our side in this journey, especially our fans once. That's pretty good. She truly has Go too board, many huh? great qualities for one idol. JYP had big plans years ahead of Twice's debut, and many still undermine the extent of the company's planning. JYP wanted their concept to be healthy, in reference to the mind, body and beauty, which still reigns true to this day, with a heavy focus on colour pop and electro pop covering a lot of their discography, especially in the early days, often resulting in them being lumped into nothing more than cute and bubbly, but that is not the limit of Twice's musicality. This whole concept of healthiness links to the sole meaning of Twice's name, to be charmed twice, once by beauty and a second by catchy music, which again Twice has not faltered in upholding even seven years into their career, with hit after hit. And on a personal note, I truly believe that JYP planned for Twice to be a group that grows with their audience, as if you listen to their songs in order, you can almost see three stages of a story, dreaming slash thinking about love, being in love, and remembering problems of their experienced love. Okay. JYP has always been known for creating idols with golden personalities, as it is one of the core qualities they look for in their trainees. And right. even focusing on recent times, this may be a factor as to why Twice is as successful as they are, as their love for their fans, music, and each other is objectively one of the strongest I have seen. This has created an incredibly tight-knit circle, whereby once, Twice's fan base and Twice themselves can comfortably communicate with each other on a level that is close to a friendship, near enough unseen by a lot of idols in the industry. Twice rely on once and once rely on twice, and both sides truly understand this. Also, from here on out, it may be more of an information overload for newer onces, so please bear with me. As I've stated before, Twice's core concepts as a group is health. However, this has not stopped them or limited them from exploring new sounds, new genres, and new styles, scene. unlike many seem to think. Across seven years, we've seen title tracks never sound the same, even with some tackling the same type of concept, 
which is a major feat in itself, having songs for all types of people to enjoy. Some title track genres include Bossa Nova, Future House, EDM, Bubblegum Pop, Retro Synthwave and many more types of genres that are usually mixed together. Now if we talk about their b-sides and their variations, we would be here for what seems like an eternity, but it's almost like Twice has nearly covered every genre there is to do. Let's have a quick look. Rock, contemporary R&B, Latin pop, city pop, hip hop, waltz, trap, jazz and many many more again. This results in a very rich listening experience for once who's across their albums, as Twice love attempting different genres within albums and not just focusing on one type. You never know what to expect next time they come back and this is And a lot of K-pop groups do that and that's one of the reasons why I also can like enjoy their songs I guess more than like just what I would hear here in the US because I feel like I mean artists sometimes change but like they are just it's just not you guys have to understand especially if if you live here and you listen to music here it's just nothing like it's just not the same like not even in the same ballpark and that is literally the biggest reason why I'm so pulled into K-pop. I love it and I literally need more. It's one of their best qualities. Across their 173 Korean song journey, not including Japanese songs, English songs, covers and OSTs. That's a lot of songs. Speaking of which, I think it's very important to highlight Twice's material that isn't necessarily official, as this also shows their talents and versatility in a variety of ways. But we'll talk about that later in the video. Now where did it all start? Twice debuted on the 20th of October 2015 with Like U A and mini album The Story Begins. They literally debuted three days after my birthday. In the first week, Like U A did worse than the company had hoped for, mostly being overlooked by the general public at first. But then a week later, after hype had gathered, it began to steadily pick up and gain attention. Not enough for a huge success story, but just enough attention on Twice for the life-changing events that would come in the following year, 2016. April 2016, Cheer Up. The song every K-pop fan knows. The song every Korean member of the public knows. Their first comeback. Cheer Up was a national sensation. It was the talk of the country. The catchy mm. melody, the easy dance, and most importantly, <laughs> Shy 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 went viral and I'm saying everyone was doing it. This song alone threw Twice into the role of Korea's national girl group, previously owned by Girls' Generation, the top girl group of the last generation. This was huge for Twice, an unprecedented amount of success, attention and love, and it only got better. In comes That's their so second cool. comeback in October, TT. 2016 was really Twice's defining year. <laughs> There was pressure, there was doubt, but they blew it all out of the water and further surpassed everyone's expectations yet again. For six years, it reigned as the most viewed music video of any JYP act ever at 690 million views, being dethroned in 2022 by one of Twice's own songs, What Is Love? Their seventh <laughs> oh, comeback. That's cool. TT was not only the talk of Korea, but now across the pond in Japan. Everyone was doing the pose, Dion's catchy It was the success of Cheer Up all over It was so popular in Japan in fact That in June of 2017 Twice released their first full length Japanese version ever with TT Along with a newly shot music video A new stepping stone for their Japanese YouTube channel That was soon about to take off as well To this day It is still their third most viewed music video on the Japanese channel this truly cemented their success and pushed them straight to one of the top groups leading their generation, That's having cool. only been one year. From then on out, every single song Twice put out was a hit, seller after seller, and showed absolutely no sign of stopping. They were the first ever girl group to win Song of the Year at the Eminent Asian Music Awards three times in a row, 2016 for Cheer Up, 2017 for Signal, and 2018 for What Is Love with the only other group doing so being BTS the following years. They are also the That's only girl cool. group to win Girl Group of the Year four times at MAMA, being 2016, 2018, 2019 and 2021, and further being the K-pop girl group with the most awarded day sangs ever, 18, 
placing them third overall, Daesang's being one of K-pop's highest and most respected awards. So what are the notable turning points and achievements of TWICE? They had their Japanese debut in 2017 with One More Time, debuting at number one on the Japanese Hot 100 right at release, a feat that would soon become nothing more than standard for TWICE's Japanese releases. In 2017, they also released their first full album titled TWICE-tagram, the same name as their Instagram page. The title track would be Likey, and this is one of their best songs and albums to date. I mean, I can see why. It's literally so catchy. It really sums up twice and their earlier style. Likey touched on the hardships of social media and societal pressures while upholding Twice's catchy, upbeat song style, but still conveyed the upsetting message really well. It's one of my all-time favourites. One of their tracks on the album, Rolling, recently gained traction again during Twice's fourth world tour, because you'll see. <laughs> Every song on this album deserves that attention, and if you want a look into Twice's earlier discography, this album would be a good start. Twice also hit it big in Japan with Candy Pop, their first Japanese comeback in January 2018. It's a pure cute concept, with the music video partly in anime, that fits nicely with the Japanese idol aesthetics. It this ironically just reminded me of Niju's uh, Korean debut and how they had anime mixed in with theirs. But I love seeing the anime mixed in to the music video. I just think it's such a different vibe. Clearly appeals to the Japanese and non-Japanese public as it is the most viewed Japanese song by a K-pop girl group at 163 million views. This would truly kickstart their Japanese career. Twice has an insane Japanese discography, and if you eliminate their Korean discography, you would be able to witness their growth and style from the Japanese side alone, arguably even be more diverse. They never fail to treat Japan and Japanese fans as their own, writing and composing songs for Japan, promoting on TV shows and award shows, and putting the same I'm not gonna amount lie. of quality into everything they do. I can't work to YouTube. Um when i first like learned of twice i didn't realize that they wrote a lot of their songs i just i don't know i just i didn't think about it so like hearing that and like learning about it it just like adds another level of like respect for them i can't even imagine like it just shows how talented they are also because it I, me personally, I know I couldn't go write a song. So I just, I don't know. I just think, like, I have a whole new level of respect for them since learning that. there ...as they would in Korea. It's truly outstanding to be able to live a double life like they do. 2018 would be a very up and down year for Twice, and not in terms of their music or achievements. As the new hottest girl group who were known to release hits quickly and consistently, especially more than other idol groups, this system Twice was following would soon take a toll on their health as a group. Twice would release five mini albums across the year, spanning 29 new songs, with one being a Japanese album. Wanties were beginning to question, is this too much for Twice to handle? Which also seemed to be the same question Twice themselves were raising. The Mama Award will come around at the end of the year. I just want to leave this speech that Gio made here, so you can truly understand how they were feeling. Oh, 이렇게 3년 동안 정말 바쁜 스케줄 하다 보면서 몸도 마음도 특히 올해 많이 지쳐 했었던 것 같은데 네 이렇게 늘 서로에게 힘이 돼주고 서로 위로가 돼주고 늘 밝은 현장 만들어주는 우리 멤버들에게 정말 너무 고생했다고 너무 고맙다고 얘기하고 싶습니다. 
또 저희 트와이스가 여러분들에게 더 좋은 노래들 그리고 에너지 넘치는 무대들 많이 많이 보여드리도록 하겠습니다. 진심으로 감사드립니다. And she was not wrong about coming back better. Twice. That literally made me want to cry. This has only just got started. I mentioned that Twice is a group that grows with their audience and that they are often limited to Q. Now, this was most notably opposed in 2019 with their releases of Fancy and Feel Special. Fancy was a K pop sensation, it embodies K pop. Everyone was singing it. Everyone was dancing to it and everyone was tuned in. It was different conceptually and lyrically from their previous releases, being more mature and seductive. With the album, Fancy You, also embodying this newfound maturity in all its songs. Especially in Strawberry, that Chaeyoung wrote, which was basically about hickeys. It is the most viewed song in the first 24 hours for Twice, at 42 million, and it's fair to say it opened a new way for them into the American market. It was without a doubt one of Twice's best songs and the world was realising this. 2019 was almost a copy of 2016 for Twice, two Korean songs that would become a staple of their career and a year of great success. This second song being Feel Special. You make me feel special. I like that some of the big songs are I've covered so far, but to hear that there's so many more, like just hit after hit after hit after hit, I feel bad for them because clearly they worked way too hard at one point. But I don't know. Like, they're just, I don't know what I was going to even say at this point. Now, Feel Special is one of the most important songs for Twice and Once Alike. The song was written by JYP himself for and about twice and their struggles of idol life. It was their first comeback during Mina's hiatus. Both the members and the fans were unsure if Mina would participate in this comeback, as many idols who go on hiatus seem not to do. Then Mina's teaser dropped. As a fan, there was no way to describe the feeling and happiness and reassurance from seeing her after many months of radio silence. Participating in the music video for fans, even though she was enjoying one of the roughest times of her life. Everyone was entirely grateful, and the song lived up to the hype. An amazing but sentimental dance pop track and album to go with it, featuring a song written by all the members called 2129, to thank and show gratitude for once for being by their side all this time. It was truly one of their most heartfelt and best eras. Now, after 2019, Twice never abandoned their catchy, poppy, youthful type of music, and I hope they never do. But many of their B-sides, music videos and lyrics did begin to change to show different aspects of Twice. Cry For Me is the furthest from Twice's core concept that we have ever gotten. So let's explore this a little. dropped randomly during their MAMA 2020 performance to unexpected fans and viewers. It was a revolution. A song that was originally going to be scrapped by the company and a song that may never have been released after MAMA if it wasn't for the immense attention and success it gathered. It's a song that explores the concept of heartbreak and annoyance at the romantic interest for not showing any type of emotion during a breakup. Twice truly conveys this in their emotive choreography for this song. It was well received in Korea, however, it was definitely bigger outside, resulting in Twice having their first US show appearance on The Kelly Clarkson Show. Although, it still doesn't have a music video, so please hurry up with that JYP. This was yet again another turning point for them, and now every time they come back, they would have at least one American TV show or YouTube channel per comeback whether it be Ellen, Stephen Colbert, or Good Morning America. Twice had been increasing their Western attention since Fancy, 
but it was only getting bigger and quicker from here. Twice's comebacks would continue to grow in success in the West, as in July of 2020, they would come back with more and more with album of the same name. This would be their first US Billboard 200 chart appearance at number 200, selling 6,000 copies in the US. The song was originally going to Zara Larson, who even recorded a demo, but I'm glad Twice got their hands on it, as it's an incredible dance track with an amazing instrumental. More. When they said that this was in the top 200 for the, um, in the US, I was just kind of curious if I had heard it, but I haven't. Their second comeback of that year would be their second full album, Eyes Wide Open, featuring the title track and retro synthwave styled I Can't Stop Me, arguably one of Twice's top three title tracks to date, according to me anyway. It would peak at number 72 on Billboard 200 and sell 14,000 copies, a significant increase from just a few months prior. Their first comeback of 2021, Alcohol Free, and album titled Taste of Love peaked at number 6 on the Billboard 200, entering the top 10 for the first time ever and selling 46,000 copies. This was an unprecedented jump of number of sales and place on the chart since their last two comebacks, and it's only been less than a year. Twice even made an appearance on The Ellen Show, performing Alcohol Free for a US audience. It's their second most acclaimed album at 77 on Metacritic and their first appearance on the site. Metacritic being a site that collates album reviews of critics like NME, Sputnik and Beats Per Minute. This would all be a big lead up to their long awaited US debut, The Feels. It was a hit. It perfectly embodied twice and did not stray from their core concept to fit the Western views at all. And it proved successful. It will be their first appearance on the US Hot 100 at number 83. It was their second highest Spotify debut behind their most recent comeback in 2022 and went 38 on the Japanese 100 along with so many more firsts and milestones for the group. The Feels would be featured on their third full album that came after, known as Formula of Love, featuring the title track, Scientist. This is Twice's most critically acclaimed album and has a score on Metacritic of 88 being the second most acclaimed album behind TXT's Freeze at 89. For a long period after the release of Formula of Love, it remained K-pop's most acclaimed album with a score of 91, but this recently dropped due to more reviews being added over time. Formula of Love was also a major success and maybe Twice's most diverse piece of work today. It also features for the first time ever, unit songs by the members, being three songs of three members, Push and Pull by Sana, Gio and Dahyun. Oh. Hello by Nayeon, Cheung and Momo. And 132 by Jong Young, Sui, and Mina. Each showcasing a completely different side of Twice, with Hello being the most opposite to Twice's original colour, being hip hop and trap. This was also the first time we had any official songs that didn't involve all nine members. It was also the Spearhead album for their fourth world tour that came not long after, whereby Twice was so successful in the US at this point 
that they added the Bank of California Stadium. As I guess I didn't realize they were like so big in the U.S. Kind of feel disappointed in myself that I didn't know that. But that being said, it really does make me curious on why for their this will be their fifth world tour, I believe. Um, why they have only one stop in the U.S. It just kind of piqued my interest, you know? Encore to the tour due to the high ticket demand and then adding a second day of the Encore due to tickets selling in minutes, averaging around 50,000 people in the queue and being the first K-pop girl group to tour at a U.S. stadium. <gasps> at the time... Shut up. Really? Remember this video, Nine is the first and only member of Twice to debut solo. She debuted with a self-titled album, Im Nayon, or I'm Nayon, with the title track, Pop. Nayon seemingly worked on this for around six months or so, whilst pumping out a multitude of other songs for Twice and doing a tour. It was a big moment for them, as Twice had stated many a times that they had no intention of going solo. Twice was so collected as a group, in fact, that they didn't have solo accounts until a month before Nayon's solo. So they went at least six years with a group Instagram account. This shows that 2022 was truly a year that Twice was beginning to explore their individuality, which the company had been hesitant to do for a long time, as it had backfired. But isn't it like under JYP, don't they have to wait X amount of years before they can even do anything like that? Correct me if I'm wrong, but that was always the impression that I had. In the past. Coming out during a time where K-pop was focusing on retro synths and Y2K trends, Nine seemed to take it back a few years, bringing back the infectious bubblegum pop of 2017 and 2018. It was a bigger success than what the company and non-fans were expecting it to be, resulting in Nyon being the most streamed female K-pop artist of 2022, winning Best Female Artist at MAMA 2022, gaining a 78 on Metacritic, being the first and only female K-pop soloist to do so, and many, many other record-breaking achievements. August 2022 would then introduce Talk That Talk. An album titled Between One and Two. This was their first comeback after their contract renewal, being a sentimental moment for Once's and Twice's alike, as not many groups, girl groups especially, make it past the seven year mark, even the most successful ones. It was recently found out that the girls didn't know each other had renewed until the day once is found out, making it all the more wholesome. So whilst morale was high, they dropped their 11th- Dude, learning all of this stuff is making me so emotional, like I want to cry. Mini album. Talk That Talk is definitely one of my top three title tracks of Twice boasting a Y2K aesthetic. It is one of their most successful albums, being number three on Billboard 200, selling 100,000 units in the US within their first week. Oh, wow. 16 times higher than their first ever entry two years ago. It was also their first time reaching 1 million pre-orders, and due to the success of Between 1 and 2, by the end of the year, they were the best-selling and most streamed girl group on Spotify that year, showcasing their immense Western growth. Now we come to their most recent comebacks at the time of this video, an English single named Moonlight Sunrise, which would land at number 84 on the Hot 100. It would also earn them the Billboard Women in Music Award, named Breakthrough Artist. Dude, she's making noise right now. <laughs> Did you see a mouse? No, she's that excited for twice. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Where they would attend the award ceremony in America and perform Moonlight Sunrise in the presence of artists like Rosalia, 
SZA and Lana Del Rey. Moonlight Sunrise will be included in Twice's small lineup of R&B songs and it clearly did them well. Their follow-up album to this is titled Ready To Be, with the main track being Set Me Free. This would be their most successful album to date, surpassing 1.7 million pre-orders, a major increase from their last album only a matter of months ago, as well as numerous streaming and charting records for Twice. It was a statement to their continuous growth. This would also be the spearhead album for their fifth world tour, which is currently taking place, where they will cross some of Asia, Australia, North America, and thankfully Europe for the first time. I'm still hoping they do more Asian dates and South American dates as well. It's a record-breaking tour, seen twice as the first girl group ever to perform and sell out at SoFi Stadium and MetLife Stadium, both with a capacity of 50,000 for the tour. It also has 1 million attendees across a relatively small amount of stops, so a lot of us are hoping for more countries with increased venue size. Lastly, the J-line of Twice, Mina, Sana and Momo, known as Me San Mo, have just debuted on the 25th of July with their album Masterpiece, being Twice's first official subunit. Do not touch the title. Okay, that's actually really cool, especially the fact that JYP let them do that. ...track was released on July 14th, a week prior to the album. <laughs> It's a very mature concept tackling the issues of consent, further showing an aspect of Twice's growth. The J-Line are some of the most famous people in Japan, so attention is incredibly high and they will sure deliver during its promotional weeks. At the time of recording, Mi Samo have just smashed Twice's iTunes record, being Twice's second song to go number one on the worldwide iTunes albums chart, charting top three in the US, UK and France and going number one in 20 other countries. The J-Line also had a hand in the making of the album, each writing- That's super impressive. I'm like, actually, I'm just so surprised. Thank you guys so much for telling me to watch this video. This was, this was great. The song for it, choosing the concept, clothes, and covering all other creative aspects, enhancing their artistry. We discussed some of Twice's comebacks over the past years, but what are some of the projects they're involved in? First, let's talk collaborations. Nyon, Cheung, Gio, and Sana collaborated with League of Legends in a song called I'll Show You, featuring Becca Boom and Anika Wells. Nyon also collaborated with Felix from Stray Kids. I had no clue that they had a song in League of Legends. That's actually insane. It's on no problem. As well as Korean rapper Wonstein in Love Countdown. Both of which are on her self-titled solo album. Twice also collaborated with Lux, a Japanese hair product brand, to create probably one of the best Japanese songs of all time, Just Be Yourself. <laughs> On to covers. Twice covered Jackson 5's Want You Back, even coming out with a music video and a Spotify release. They've Shut also done up. many covers in their Melody Project series, whereby a member chooses a song they want to cover and uploads it to their YouTube channel. Some come with a music video and some don't. Some examples being Chewy covering Taylor Swift, Cheyenne to Justin Bieber, and Nyon to Ariana Grande. 
They also have performance projects, similar to Melody Projects, which is mostly focused on the dance side of Twice. This is a more recent project for Twice, with Momo being the first to do so in February 2021, with Gio following suit in May of the same year. Whilst not being performance projects, there are two other videos I'd like to highlight. Momo was featured in the whole music video for Yuka Didi's song, Superhero, and Momo, Cheung and Chewy did a dance cover to Ariana Grande's Bloodline. Twice have also made OSTs, or original soundtracks, which are mostly used in K-dramas. As I stated before, Gio has made three of these solo, that and they are so cool. I Fly, Stardust Love Song, and A Strange Day, all being well received among the Korean public and the watchers of their respective K-dramas. Gio, Chui, Nayeon and Cheung sang an OST by the name of Daring Woman, and Jonghyun also featured on an OST with her sister, Sungyeon, by the name of My Dream Class. Twice as a group also had the OST, I Love You More Than Anyone, a beautiful song for the K-drama Hospital Playlist. <laughs> The more and more I watch, I know we're almost in, but they are, they are so huge. Like, I just I wasn't ready for that. This isn't a project, but is nice to know in terms of how well TWICE looks after their fans across numerous countries. TWICE as a group have many versions of their songs in multiple languages. All of their title tracks have a Japanese version, excluding their most recent, Talk That Talk and Set Me Free. They have four English versions of their Korean title tracks, being More and More, I Can't Stop Me, Cry For Me, and Set Me Free. They also have a few Korean versions of their non-Korean songs, with The Feels, Breakthrough, and BDZ to name a few. Continuing with Twice's projects, what does the future hold? It was just confirmed that Gio, the leader, will be taking on her first solo album, dropping on August 18th, with the title track Killing Me Good and album Zone. It will be twice his second ever solo debut and there's no better or a more ready person than Gio. We have very limited information so far, so please keep updated. It is also predicted for twice to have their next group comeback around October or November of 2023, so stay tuned for that. Finally, Twice is a group that has never failed to grow as an artist in the last seven years and clearly show no sign of stopping anytime soon. With their newfound focus and success in the Western market and the consistent backing of Asia, I will not be surprised when they continue to reach new heights with every comeback. And for the new ones out there, I hope you will be the one to witness their success and follow them on their journey from here on out because Twice are no longer just K-pop idols. They're global artists, legends. Thank you guys so much for watching. I apologize for the mic audio throughout the video. I'm literally recording this on my iPhone using voice memo. I also apologise if my voice is really boring to listen to because I feel like that's a complaint I can handle. <laughs> there will be many things I've left <laughs> out, so any questions will be answered down below. Don't forget to follow my Twitter and subscribe for more Twice content in the future. Thank you. I'm speechless. I have like a roller coaster of emotions right now. Um, again, I wish I knew more what to say. I'm just like, I have so many emotions and I just didn't understand the depth of twice. So like the fact that I'm going to their concert, <laughs> I'm like fangirling way more now. I'm not even gonna lie. I'm so excited. Overall, this was a great video and I just wanna thank you guys so much for telling me about it and introducing me to it. I'm generally, I'm just so much more excited now and I'm so grateful for you guys for letting me know to watch this guide. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys so much again and stay tuned for more Twice content.